Okay, for those of you that may have joined us late, the format tonight is the first 15 minutes of the time slot that's allotted is uh, for our media panelists to ask some pre-prepared questions that the candidates have not seen. And in that midst, if you hear an answer or have a question that you'd like answered, you can write that question down. There should be slips in the center of your table, and then we will take those off to the side. And the second 15 minutes of the time slot, I will address those questions to our candidates. So that's the format tonight. And with that said, I'll turn it back over to Andrea. Thank you, candidates, for uh, coming. Uh, District 1 uh, for tonight's Citizen Project Forum. Um, as um, much like Ralph did earlier, if you happen to be here, I would like to give everyone a chance to provide a small opening statement. So um, if we can do one minute per, and we will start, um, if we don't mind, with, with Joe here on the end. So for the guy whose name is last on the ballot, how come I always get to go first? We'll reverse the order next time. All right, so my name is Joe Barrera, and I'm running for city council from District 1, and I welcome everybody tonight, and I'm glad that you're here, and I'm glad that I'm here. So why am I running? Well, one of the reasons that I'm running is because I want to fix the Waldo Canyon burn scar. I want to get to that before we have some disastrous floods. I haven't really heard much about that in this campaign, but I think I need to really emphasize that. The other, the other big reason that I'm running is because uh, the present council uh, is, to me, seems to be floundering, and the mayor, uh, in, under the strong mayor system, seems to be uh, filling a power vacuum there, and I think that uh, that needs to be balanced. So uh, if I'm elected, I will work very hard to uh, uh, clarify the status quo of council. Thank you. And Don Knight, please. Good evening, everybody. And again, thank you, as, everybody, as others have said, thank you for coming. We appreciate your coming out here and the due diligence that you're doing as citizens and casting your vote. I'm running because like many others here, I love this city and I believe I can bring the success I had as 26 years as an Air Force officer in 10 years doing business development in the defense industry, of leading people and managing programs to bring our city together and help us grow, move forward as one team to new economic heights. And the successes I have tell me the best way to do that is keep our utility citizens owned, to work together regionally wherever we can, whether it's promoting tourism or uh, combating uh, the stormwater and finally, to promote entrepreneurial relationships like we're doing with the Newman Systems and the Solar Gardens. Thank you. Thank you. And Linda? It's Mojer. Mojer? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know that's why you hesitated. <laughs> My name is Linda Mosier. I have lived in Colorado Springs for over 22 years, and I'm a small business owner. I own a writing and editing firm which is basically just myself, so it's very small. 
And uh, one of my primary clients is the Southern Colorado Women's Chamber of Commerce. So I manage much of, of their business as their executive director. I am running uh, simply because I had, like so many others, a, a very life-changing experience over the summer, although I wasn't uh, affected by the, by the fire directly. I was affected by it um, emotionally and definitely got a feeling that this community could use more pulling together all the time when, all the time, not just when, there's a, a disaster. You can start with that shorter part next time. Thanks. Thank you. Good evening, and, uh, everybody. Tim. Um, Tim Lee. I'm currently a city council person. Um, I'm running for, I guess, election to District 1 or re-election, I guess, um, really to finish the job I started. And I think the job I started was to be, as they say, the uh, guy that uh, stirs the pot too much or whatever. I uh, do take positions. I take hard positions. And sometimes my policy positions are not um, looked upon favorably by some of my contemporaries. But, you know, we have arguments and we reach uh, finally conclusions like we did this afternoon, hard decision on oil and gas, for example. I've lived in District uh, 1 for over 30 years. I'm very familiar with some of the issues. I'm not familiar with all of the issues, but if I'm elected, I promise to represent the district uh, to the best of my ability. Thank you. And uh, Julie. Hi, everybody. I'm Julie Nay. And uh, I decided to run because uh, I'm the mother of four sons. And uh, like all of you, I love it here in Colorado Springs. I want to have a hand in, in uh, continuing to help evolve this city into a place where they want to stay and uh, not run off to another place where it's more, more uh, profitable for them. I want them to stay here and uh, have their families so that uh, I can be selfish and have them here with me. Um, I think that the city has a lot of issues and uh, I want to help in, in making those decisions so that we can have far-reaching and close-reaching uh, decisions that probably have been overlooked uh, by the current council, and, uh, and I think that I can have a, a positive impact. Thank you. And uh, the, the next, the first question, um, I'm actually going to start at the other end of the table with you, Julie Ney. Um, and, and much like the other districts before, I would like to get um, an idea of how you feel about the ballot issues. Let's start with the TOPS issue. Um, what, how do you, um, do you support that, uh, yes or no, or why, and why and why not? Uh, to my understanding, uh, the funding was there to purchase uh, open space. And so that the, the funding is already there, so yes, I would support some of that money going to, uh, to help the upkeep and uh, the parks and trails and so forth. So yes, I would do that so, because there is no, uh, no more money that would, the taxpayers would have to come up with. If that were the case, then I probably would not uh, support that. But since there is no more money coming from the taxpayers, I will say yes, supporting that. Thank you. Tim Lee. Um, yeah, I support, I think everybody, any thinking person supports the park system that we have in Colorado Springs. Uh, I've been a strong advocate of parks and open space. I actually have had a plan drawn for a uh, visitor center for the Red Rock open space. My children have been through the, um, uh, I guess we called it the Rock Ledge Ranch, um, uh, White House Ranch when they were in there. So I've been involved in parks on the west side, been in parks, involved with parks across the city and, and certainly endorse uh, anything we can do to enhance funding for the parks. Thank you. Linda Moter. Thank you. Of, of course, um, trails and open space are very important in this, uh, in this region, and I, it, it would be difficult not to. I, I have only been to two city council meetings, and this afternoon, I believe, at least part of that was, was somewhat resolved by some of the discussions that I heard there. And it just made, made me think a little more closely about some of the, the details and the specifics of all of these types of uh, issues that really require a lot of attention. I would plan to give that attention. Thanks. Don Knight. I voted no on this, and it was a hard decision because we need that money as a city. We have a $983,000 shortfall right now in watering our parks. The, the plan was that we would get 500K of that from the passage of this amendment. 
But after much decision, I decided to go with the Trails and Open Space Coalition, who is recommending we vote against it. Not because I want to see our problem, our city in a, in a budget problem, but I want to use this as a wake-up call. You know, no matter how much promises we put down, public safety is always going to trump watering the parks in times of economic crisis like we're in now. Brown grass is better than red grass. So we need to think outside the box on how we're going to fund our uh, city parks. And so what I'm proposing is that we get with the defense companies, get with the other companies around here in town. Everybody wants to be a good neighbor. And let's help fund watering the parks through an adopt a uh, park program, just like we do with adopt a mile on our freeways. Thank you. Joe Barrera. Um, I'm a strong supporter of the parks and other amenities that we have, and I definitely will vote in favor of the tops ballot issue uh, that's going to be on uh, is on the ballot right now. Uh, I'm sorry that uh, the maintenance of effort clause was not included as part of that. Uh, we do need to continue to maintain our parks. Uh, I disagree with Don that uh, this is uh, less important than a law enforcement uh, consideration because recreational programs, amenities, uh, opportunities, uh, cultural uh, opportunities, all of that is actually something that creates an environment in which citizens feel that they belong to the community and therefore, it, is, it has a direct impact on the law and order of a community. So this is not a frill. This is, this is an essential thing that we need. Thank you. The other issue, of course, on the citywide ballot is uh, regarding uh, council pay. And so the same, same question, which is, do you support that? Do you not support it? And why or why not? And we'll begin with you, Joe Barrera. All right. Um, yes, uh, I'm looking to get rich. That's why I'm running. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, it says somewhere it's written in scripture, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Remember that? Huh? You see, you didn't go to Sunday school. Yeah, that's the other thing I'm going to do. I'm going to make all of you guys go to Sunday school. Yeah, um, we can't afford any longer to have a part-time council. We can't afford to live like we, li like we uh, used to live in the 1950s, all right? We're a huge city now, and we have to start acting like one, and we have to elect full-time people who are going to devote all their time rather than splitting their time to the city business, and we have to pay people for that. And if we don't pay them, it will actually end up being more expensive than if we paid them. Thank you. Thank you, Joe uh, Brera and Don Knight. Again, I voted no on this one. Another hard decision, but because I, I really applaud the young professionals that came forward and put this on the initiative. I support the fact that we want more diversity on council. Uh, but when you looked at the actual language, $48,000 plus benefits, plus you can have another job. And, and I'm sorry, but you know, if I'm gonna pay you a living wage, then I want you to be a full-time council person. So I voted no against it for that reason. I also voted no because this pay raise is supposed to come effect in April of 2015. That's about the same time the money of the federal grant runs out where we just hired 15 new firefighters. And I think it's more important that we find out or find a way to pay for those people and keep them on the roll than it is to give city council an increase. But with two years now, if we get proactive and we start working on the budget and find out the money, I think we can still put it on the November 14 budget if we can find a solution to both and have it enacted at the same time period. Thank you, and Linda Moter. I do support um, paying people fairly for the work that they do. Um, I do feel that there is a, a balance to be, to be met between having volunteers do work and ask them to, to do it essentially for free 
and then having low expectations. I think in government, it's very important that you be able to get what you pay for, but not make salaries so uh, exorbitant that only that they are in and of themselves an, an attractant. You do still have to have that nonprofit mentality. And I'm, of, I'm concerned that keeping the salary too low would make it only those people of independent means would be able to run for office. And I don't think that presents a fair balance to the community. Thank you. And Tim Lee. Well, I mean, I think this is an interesting issue. I think that um, the way I would couch it is that on council, there is one person who should be paid full time and he should probably be paid equal to the mayor's salary. And that's the president of the council. That's a full time job. And I think that over the course of the next 12 or 24 months, you're going to have a structural change on council. No matter who gets elected, the community conversation will probably tee up uh, restructuring what council looks like. And I think at that time, it might be an appropriate time to have this conversation. But I, so I think right now, uh, although I was the first person to advocate for pay on council, you know, I don't know, a year and a half ago, and I said we should get paid 96000 a year, that was really just to jumpstart the conversation. And at the end of the day, this is a premature proposal that, that doesn't have community support, probably likely to go down in flames. But the president of council's job is full-time, and he should be paid full-time, and I would uh, argue that it should be equal to what the mayor's salary is. Thank you. And uh, Julie Ney. Uh, my vote will be no on the, uh, on the salary increase. I I'm not opposed to uh, some increase, maybe to ten or $12,000 a year at some point. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where the money would come from. I have heard both sides of the argument. I, I am not against, uh, as I said, some pay increase. And I think that the young rising professionals do have uh, a, a great deal of insight into this, and they do have great points. Uh, as far as young people having all the innovations, I think that uh, I think that uh, older generations have a great deal of experience, and they bring a lot to the table. So I would disagree with some of their argument. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, we have uh, time for another question, and we will begin with uh, Julie Ney down at the end. Um, and, and actually, I want to springboard off of something that, um, uh, let's see, that, that, that Joe Barrera said, which is the Waldo Canyon fire. And um, of course, this is the district that was heavily hit. So what does council have the ability to do? What could council do in order, in terms of recovery, but also preparation for a potential next time? Well, I, I think that probably because of what did happen during the fire, I think that all of those uh, precautions are probably in place because of what did happen. So I think that, uh, I think that emergency uh, situation, uh, should it occur again, I think that our, our first uh, uh, response should be, what should we do for the people who are in harm's way? I think that is, is our most important priority, especially for the flooding. Uh, I think at this point uh, we should just uh, put all of our attention to those people who could be uh, in potential harm at this point. Thank you. Tim Lee. Well, I think Council's done a lot of things um, over the past, you know, since the fire. I mean, we've uh, wrestled with uh, fire code changes and landscape mitigation issues, and I think we've stepped forward and had actually done a lot of very positive things for uh, District 1 in that regard. I think that your question was, what's the one thing council can do? I would say the one thing council can do is to make sure we have good uh, rules uh, with respect to fire mitigation in all the uh, hillside overlay areas, certainly uh, properly funding uh, the fire departments and making sure we're adequately staffed, uh, making sure we take all the protections to uh, mitigate the risk of another catastrophe like the one we had. Um, certainly we're doing engineering and, and that's coordination with the utilities and with the uh, executive branch in terms of you know, how do we, you know, stop any potential catastrophic flooding and that, those kind of issues. But, uh, you know, I think we're, we did a good job. I think we'll continue to do a good job to make sure that the citizens are safe. Thank you. Linda Motor. I, I think like so, again, like so many, the fire was one of the, the most frightening things that I've ever seen in my lifetime. And now I'm, I'm certain that uh, we need to look in another direction at this point. I think with the with the just the distress to the topography, 
of that area that flood is now going to be our, our most pressing issue. So the first city council meeting that I went to was all about stormwater and that scared me to death. So now I think that's a very critical issue to deal with um, as we move forward. Not so much to, uh, I think everyone learned their lesson about fire mitigation around their homes. Um, now we need to move forward into making sure that stormwater does not become an issue in the coming season. Thank you. And Don Knight? Yep. Um, first, I want to separate the Wall Canyon flooding from the stormwater issues. I see that as two separate actions. For Waldo Canyon, the scars and the flooding damage is on federal land. And so I think it's only right that we get help with federal funding to mitigate any of the damages. And I want to applaud uh, both our congressional delegations and, and our county commissioners for going in and getting $48 million put into the House budget. It's still got to go through the Senate, though. So what I can bring is, um, when I was in the Air Force, I had unfortunately had assignment in the Pentagon. So I, I know how that, uh, I know how, a little bit how DC works, and we got an untapped resource here to help push the Senate. A lot of the big businesses here in town have government relations office, Senate relations office. So I wanna work with the rest of our delegation and everything else to help push the Senate for passage on that. And I, I do have some ideas on how we can mitigate, but time's up, so. Thank you. And uh, Joe Barrera. It's going to flood if it rains, all right? There's no doubt about it. All the professionals that I've talked to about this, uh, when they're really candid and honest, they'll tell you that we could have catastrophic floods, all right? Um, the work that's been done so far is great. That $48 million that Don's talking about, we've got to share that with 10 other states. We need a lot more money. We need a lot more people working up there. I'm the only candidate in this entire slate of candidates, this district and all the other districts, who has a plan to get volunteers up there, people, to do the pick and shovel and bucket work to try to uh, prevent the flood from happening. Everybody talks about what we do after the flood. You know, we have this and that kind of thing, you know. But I want to stop the flood. If we don't stop the flood, our 2013 tourist season could go down the tubes. Last year, it went up in smoke. I don't want to see our community lose another tourist season. Thank you. All right, it's my turn. I have questions from the audience. So I will paraphrase on some of them. Some of them are directed directly to certain candidates. If that's the case, then what I'll do is rephrase the question in another form so the rest of you can answer as well. Um, I believe today the city council voted on the fracking, and I believe it was four to four with Slatko not there, correct, Tim? Yep. Yeah. So the question, the first question actually is to Tim, what was your vote today in regards to fracking? Um, well, first of all, let me answer your, your kind of question with a statement. I mean, I think it was somewhat obvious to people who think about these things that the vote was going to be four to four. I voted uh, to allow drilling um, for a variety of reasons. One is that I think that drilling in Colorado Springs is going to be a non-event. And at some point, there are people that can't, can't hear it. Is that better? I'm sorry. Um, so I voted to allow drilling in Colorado Springs um, because I, frankly, I don't think it's going to be intrusive. I don't think there's going to be a lot of drilling. And I think Ultra proved that when they pulled out. Um, maybe the hardest decision I've made in my life, um, seriously, in, in my entire life. I mean, I went back and forth and, and, and until about the right, the last second. And even with Jan Martin's comments at council, um, she swayed me in one direction, and it could go either way. This is such an emotional decision. After I got done, I actually really called my pastor and talked, him, uh, talked through the process with him. Uh, tough, tough, tough decision. Uh, for the rest of you, do you agree or disagree with Tim as far as voting for or against? Sure, Joe, let's start. Um, if I'd been up on the dais today, I would have voted against the fracking. And the reason is that I don't think it's a heavy industrial use that belongs inside the city limits. You know, for all of the usual reasons. Huh? Uh, but having said that, um, if I were a member of the county commission, I probably would vote to allow it in the 
rural parts of the county away from homes and schools and businesses. So uh, it's, it's an issue that, ladies and gentlemen, that is not really black and white. There's a lot of gray area uh, in this thing, okay? Uh, this afternoon I had long conversations with both anti and pro-fracking people and uh, the, the, the science uh, is, is still uh, uncertain. Is, is what I can honestly say. All right, thank you. I'm in favor of oil and gas production. And again, after a lot of research. So I've been to every council meeting since the start of November. So I was there on the 27th of November when they had the first reading. And I listened to all the people concerned about it. And I walked away a little bit more with, with some questions, valid questions that they had, and I went out and did the research. And the research I found, and, and again, I listened to the second, what was supposed to be the second reading on the 11th of December, and I listened to the folks today. And again, I think the oil and gas regulation, the ordinance that was put forward, mitigates to the best extent possible all their fears. The only one that was probably short is the one that was brought up by President Pro Tem Martin, that there's not enough state inspectors. And so I, the one change I would have had is I would have gone with her idea that locally we hire inspectors to make sure that those, that ordinance is being complied with. Once again, I, I'm stunned by the complexity of these issues as I learn more about them. but. Um, one of my primary reasons for trying to become involved in this particular process is my concern for my neighbors. And if it's not going, if it's not proven to be safe or it's going to impact health adversely, I have strong reservations. So the, the additional information I learned this afternoon about the amount of water that it would take for this process also caused me a great deal of concern in terms of um, making sure that the community and the people involved get water first over an industry that um, is frankly still unproven. Uh, fracking and uh, using our, uh, getting to our natural resources here is going to give this city a great deal of uh, money, jobs, uh, things that we are in great need of here. Uh, we cannot approach things like this with any emotion whatsoever. This has to be a decision made on facts and facts alone. These decisions have over and over and over again been uh, too overridden with emotion. If there is a danger to the community, then the answer has to be no. But we have to be sure that there is indeed danger. And if there is no danger, we must go forth, and we must go forth safely, but we must take advantage then of the economy. Thank you. For those of you still wondering a lot about fracking, um, there's a really interesting, very comprehensive article in National Geographic this month on, on fracking, and it's very comprehensive. So I know there's a lot of folks who even in our newscast, we say fracking, and people go, what is that, and how does it affect me? So it's, it's actually interesting. At this point, uh, with the sake of time, I'd like to give each of you a closing statement. So Joe, why don't we start with you? OK. I think that the most important thing for the next city council on top of all of the issues that we've discussed here this evening already, is this uh, overarching uh, issue or concern about the big picture, huh? the future of our city. Uh, where are we going to go? Uh, are we going to just keep going the way we always have been going? Huh? Kind of uh, just improvising and reacting huh? to crises, huh? floundering along. Huh? Uh, I think we need to have a different kind of leadership and we need to start thinking how we are going to grow into the 21st century 
And that's what I would help us to do. Thank you. Thank you all again for coming. And I'll just repeat by saying I'm Don Knight. And the success I had in my 36 year career is telling me the right way forward is to keep our utilities citizens owned, to work regionally wherever we can, be it from tourism to battling stormwater, and to promote small business entrepreneurial relationships like we're doing with the Newman Scrubbers and the Solar Gardens. The other issue is facing us is the governance of the CSU utilities, Colorado Springs Utilities. The City Council always put, uh, also sits as their board of directors, and everybody's clamoring that we need qualified people on there. Well, I've been to the board meetings too, and the job that City Council does there is no different than the job I did for two years as second in command of all support for Cheyenne Mountain Air Force Station, including overseeing its water, wastewater, and electric utilities. So while others may say they're not qualified to do that job, I believe I am. Again, I'm Don Knight. I appreciate your vote. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Again, uh, my name is Linda Moger, and um, I am actually very pleased to have gotten through this. Um, <laughs> and my, uh, <laughs> my primary point there is simply that um, in this, in seeking a seat, on City Council, that is my ultimate goal, is to have a seat on City Council. I am not running to be the best politician in the room. That's probably never gonna happen for me. But anyone who knows me or anyone that I've spoken to or worked with in 30 years plus in nonprofit, uh, nonprofit work has always agreed that I work hard, I'm, uh, I'm a quick learner, and if I'm elected, I will certainly do the very, very best job I could for you, thanks. I'm Tim Lee, I'm running for city council. Gosh, I think I said that the first time about two and a half years ago. I think this council's had a lot of successes and I, we always get beat on that we don't have good leadership. That, I would call the BS card on that. Any big decision we've had to make at council's pretty much been unanimous, except for maybe today the oil and gas thing's been pretty contentious. But other than that, we've had pretty damn good leadership on city council. Uh, certainly we've had some contention with the mayor's office. People say I side with the mayor, people say I don't side with the mayor. That doesn't matter, we've, we've gone through a transformative change in the way we do governance. It's been hard, we've done a great job as a council. If I'm reelected, I'll continue to work uh, toward mending those fences, if you will, and bringing the government together so it does the best job for the city. In closing, I'd like to say that, uh, thank you, first of all, for having me out here. Thanks everybody for coming tonight. Uh, I don't have all the answers. Anyone who gets up here and says that they do, uh, I would be a little suspicious. Um, we are here uh, in seeking a seat or re-election for a seat uh, so that we can learn. Uh, we are here at the behest of the governed, folks. We are here to serve you. That is something that should never be forgotten, and sometimes, actually a lot of times, it is forgotten. And uh, government's role is to get out of the way of the movers and shakers out there so that you all can come up with the answers for us and that you can run this city. We are here to govern you and to see that it runs well, but really, you are here to run the city and to come up with the best answers. Thank you very much. I hope I have your support. All right, that wraps up District 1. Uh, whoever is elected, by the way, uh, please answer the phone when Fox 21 calls. <laughs>